Welcome to Wax Sun Weekly. Wax Sun Weekly is the official Western Athletic and A Sun Conference podcast of FCS Fans Nation. Wax Sun Weekly is hosted by Dustin Helton, Brandon Owens, and Will Silo. Welcome back, FCS fans nation, to week eight of the FCS football season and the ninth regular episode of Wax Sun Weekly. And I just want to point out, that intro is really cool, but uh, I don't know if you guys have noticed, there is not one team in that intro that has either the WAC or the A-Sun logo on their jersey. Um, all really? I've never paid attention to that. I, I just noticed that right now. Um Every single school either has Big Sky, Big South, uh, Southland, or OVC on there. Uh, kind of interesting, but uh, maybe we get some new footage next year. Yeah, maybe I should. Maybe I should update that. But <laughs> if you're just looking up pictures, they're all from the old conference days. But never mind that. How are you guys doing tonight? I'm good. I, you know, SFA won this week, so. Sipping on a little SFA inspired beer for Purple Lights because that's what we light up whenever we uh, win in Nacogdoches. So, Fredonia Brewing, if you're watching this or listening to this, you want to throw some sponsorship money over here because I'm holding up your beer for everybody to see. Just, just saying. DM me. We can talk about it. That's so cool. I, I think it's so cool when teams have like brews that are like inspired by the school. Yeah. You can't see, it's kind of hard to see, but like the, uh, and I'll show you whenever you come to NAC, but if you look in the background, it's actually the dorm scene hall that the purple lights are on. So it's kind That's of cool so to have the cool. canvas on it. Yeah, fredonia has got a couple. They have like the Axe or the Angry Axe IPA and some other ones, but this one has been a hit since since it first launched. And a percentage of the money goes back to SFA also. Oh, it's buy. even better. It's even better. Awesome. Brandon, we talked before, but how are you, my man? I'm doing good. I'm, I'm, I'm ready to just get out of this right so let's just let's just get it going nothing better than talking football to get you out of a rut um well i'll run through some results from uh week seven and uh (laughs) then we'll jump into a few that might have been interesting uh jacksonville state held on knocked off north alabama 47 31 in a baseball stadium uh that was interesting i only saw Uh, that game going one direction anyway i know (laughs) oh god that's a bad pun. <laughs> Such a nerd. <laughs> God, you're a nerd. Oh my uh, God. Anyway, I'm, I'm a dad. So. I was about to say that's a good dad joke. <laughs> oh me. Um, UCA went to Kennesaw and beat the Owls 51-24. Austin P uh, in their rivalry game against Murray State won 52-17. Sam Houston, in dramatic fashion, um, beat Eastern Kentucky 25-17. That game was not uh, really 25-17, but we'll talk about that in a minute. Uh, Aveline beat Southern Utah 21-18. Northern uh, Iowa took care of Utah Tech handily 41 14 and then sfa knocked off tarleton 41 to 24 at home and uh rev got to drink as much purple lights as he wanted um he, way too many way too many lights. and champagne purple lights and champagne just stay <laughs> nothing just, like beating tarleton state am i right hey you know listen here's the thing about tarleton going to high school in arlington i had a, a friends uh some you know who went to tarleton and you know we were in different classes uh socially not grade wise, just socially, but you know, they went to, they went to, uh, you know, that bone school in Stevensville. So it's one of those things that I haven't, I want to say an inherit dislike for Tarleton, but I don't like them. So beating them and beating Bo Allen was enjoyable to watch. It was a, it was an enjoyable experience, especially the way SFA turned it on in the second half and played like the team we kind of expected them to be all year. So we can get that later, but yeah, thoroughly enjoyed the time. It was fun. Uh, we'll just start with that game because I thought it was uh, good to see SFA play, like you said, like we thought they could. Um, so what did you see 
uh, in that game that, you know, has you excited because some of the voters are still putting SFA in their in their polls. And I think they're are they ranked in one poll? They're ranked in the coaches poll. I think they're 20th. Or yeah. Something like that. But I mean, if you think about it, they're four and three and their three losses are against Louisiana Tech, Jacksonville State, Sam Houston. So yep. it's how you count it. They're not FCS losses. So against the FCS, they're three and oh, and they're another one that's non counter against Warner Brothers Studios. Um, watch them. It was nice to see one Xavier Gibson get uh, get some action. His punt return for a touchdown. I mean, just it show he it just shows the pure athleticism and speed that he has. But it's kind of it's, one of the things we did see is kind of a tale of two halves again. You know, the first half Trey Self didn't look himself. He looked not confident. Um, the second half he turned it on and played great. You know, and so just trying to figure out what we can do to see consistency across all four, four quarters with them. Um, you know, but other than that, like, I mean, it was still a good game. Our defense looked great. Got a couple, you know, a couple picks, like we said, we limited Bo Allen and Bo Allen can sling the rock. You could see where he could, he could throw the ball real well, but we just did a good job of shutting down the Tarleton offense. I thought, um, it was a lot of fun after the game, your favorite coach, coach Carthel gave me a hug. Uh, on the field, which is cool. <laughs> and, I had, but, I have nothing against the man anymore. I, <laughs> I I do think it was cheesy when he took his shirt off. And other than that, uh, I have been uh, very impressed with how he Boy, one how he coaches and two how he carries himself. I think he's, you're gonna he's you're gonna hate third downs then whenever you come to the game on November twelfth. What does he like? Take his shirt off on every third down? They do on the screen, yeah. Oh my God! But thankfully, the way our tints will be, your back will be to it, so you won't, won't. see it. <laughs> I just won't look at it. I'm just warning you. There's some things production wise, game wise that are that did kind of annoy uh, annoy me. I don't want to say that, but like if I ever hear Hell's Bells one more time in my life, I'm probably gonna lose oh, it. Oh, that's that's everybody. I know, but like it's just was every third down is you know time to swing your shirt, you know, and then they start playing the beginning of Hell's Bells. I'm like. <laughs> That's fine. You're going to swing your shirt get loud. That's one thing. I'm good with that. You know, you're playing on something, but let's, let's, you know, why don't we make chainsaw sounds? We're lumberjacks. Do something that's loud. Don't, don't, you know, don't go. I'm not going to hum it because I don't want to get a copyright strike, but you know what I mean? Like, so, I mean, but other than that, like the game day experience was great. Getting back to NAC because I hadn't been up yet this year was great. And seeing our team perform, you know, felt good. Now we go on the road to Southern Utah, which will be a fun one, I think. And then, you know, like I said, in a few weeks, we got a good one against UCA. Well, still some big games left on the schedule. Yep, there are a lot of big games. Um, next game I want to jump to Jacksonville State, North Alabama. Um, this game was it looked like it was in hand. It was 31 14 at half. Uh, again, it was played in the baseball stadium at the Rocket City Trash Pandas. Um field in uh Madison. And UNA came storming back, and I, I was, was worried. Yeah, uh, granted, I couldn't watch it because I had other priorities, but sure, I was getting updates and I was just like, are you freaking kidding me? It was it looked like it was about to be a an epic collapse, um, but it was not. Jacksonville State came back, still put up 47 points, rushed for like 300 yards, um, mm-hmm. which if you do that, you're probably going to win a football game. Um, so. What did you see out of that game? Because I know the North Alabama fans are pretty upset. Uh, I was on their fan forum today, just kind of reading around. And it was like, okay, we're going to score points on people, but we can't stop anybody. And, I mean, they're like they're predicting themselves to lose like on the fan forum. And that's like rock bottom. When you're like diehards, start predicting losses. But yeah. uh, what did you see? Um, Of what I saw, JSU was dominant. Um. I didn't get to see the second half uh, because that was around the time we were in warm up, about to go on the field and um, awards. Uh, so I didn't get to see that. But like the first half, JSU looked really dominant yeah. and looked like looked like how JSU should be looking every single game. Uh, unfortunately, that's kind of like that. The thirty-one to fourteen. Obviously, that's a seventeen-point spread. Mm-hmm. And it doesn't take much to make that a close game. I mean, they scored two touchdowns. No, it doesn't. And so, I mean, you go from 31, 14, 31, 28 and you scare everybody, but really that was just, I mean, that's two possessions. So, um, obviously they, you know, they scored almost 50 points. So anytime you do that, you pretty much nominated. Uh, so they continue to look like who we think they are. Um, with the exception of a couple 
close one. I guess, well, really just Kennesaw, but um, what? So the both bands were there. The Southerners were seated behind the away side field stands. They were the furthest away from the field. Like Wait. part of the part of the Southerners could not see the field. They could not see what was going on on the field. Well, I guess that's probably just the nature of putting in a baseball stadium. Yeah, like why? Why the hell was it moved to the Trash Panda Stadium? Like, granted, I love the Rocket City Trash Panda's name. I think it's one of the best names in minor league baseball. But oh, it's grown on me. I love but, it. But but was it? I mean, was it because they figured bigger fans and they couldn't hold them out in Florence? That I, like no. I don't get why you why no. you do something. Rale- like, listen, listen. Raleigh seats more. Than that's what I thought. I thought, I thought I I thought the stadium in Florence seated more. So I I don't get this besides the fact that it's a spectacle. So I was when I was reading on their fan <laughs> website, their fans say that uh, obviously they're trying to figure out an on-campus stadium, but they're also trying to kind of they're at odds apparently with the city of Florence, and um, they want to put the logo on the field at Braley, and apparently the city has told them no because it's a high school stadium and whatnot, mm-hmm. and. It belongs uh, to Florence High School. Yes. And so they, one, wanted to put their logo on a field at on with a game that was going to have Alabama, like, citizens at the game. And um, they're apparently wanting to reach into kind of the Huntsville market uh, more so than they have before. And they thought that they could if they had it there. And they've um, always been in the Huntsville market, but okay. Yeah. Well, they thought they could get more exposure by doing that and having their logo on the field and almost put some pressure on the city of Florence to like kind of work with them a little bit more. Okay. The pressure on, on the city of Florence, I understand, but everything else, like as far as recruiting goes, Huntsville is UNA territory. Well, yes, but you want to like your logo needs to be on TV in that market. Oh, I, I agree. I totally agree. But here's the thing. I don't think doing that's going to be the kind of pressure because they have no leverage. What are you going to do? Say, hey, we're going to go play a one direction game every home game in, in Madison. Like they're not going to do that because it's not feasible and sustainable. What they have to do is they have to get they have to get their boosters involved, their alumni involved and find a way to funding to build a stadium, to find a way to build a stadium on their campus versus depending on upon playing at the high school stadium. I mean, you're you're a damn D1 team now. Right, yeah. you're not D2, you're damn D one team. You should have your own stadium. You know, I mean, there are some there are some places that don't have their own stadium where their stadiums are owned by the city, aka North Dakota State. But you know, you at least want to have something where you can put your logo on the field, where you can put your your all your <laughs> stuff there. And so they, you know, I don't think doing that accomplishes anything except for to let them get their logo on the field. Well, here's the thing: Brawley seats what? between 12,000 and 14,000 am I correct about that I thought it was more like 15 16 but it might, you it might be it's but somewhere around there there is a stadium in Huntsville that local high schools use that never is filled up because the the capacity is way too big for a high school stadium here or a, for a high school football game here in Alabama Milton Frank Stadium seats 12,000 well that could be perfect exactly if they're looking but for you also don't want to have to drive. You, don't, you don't want to have to drive that's the thing that's what that's what's doomed like umass football whenever they were you know they're based in, they were based in what amherst and they're playing games at gillette stadium trying mm-hmm. to like you don't want to do that because your your students aren't going to necessarily go right. to that. like that's like the but the, the thing is gonna wear off of that real quick the thing is florence is between Depending on which way you go, it's a forty-five minute to an hour drive. But they're not going. I'm saying they're not. But I'm saying that. But um, and also a majority of your students come from the Huntsville area, so literally, it's literally like them driving home for the weekend. Maybe, but you're just gonna have less students at the game. Yeah, like, you, just naturally. Yeah. But you, I mean, if you were looking for a better place to host a big crowd like that you milton, frank would, milton frank would have been a better choice and if you're wanting if you if you think it's necessary kind of like how the university of alabama did with legion field if you think it's yeah. necessary to host some of your games some of your home games at an off-campus stadium and you go to huntsville milton frank needs to be your first choice not not a minor league baseball stadium yeah 
they did say they made uh, like the administration said that they expected to and then followed up and said they did make uh, more money off of this game than they did any other home game. And the crowd was actually smaller, but they had more like luxury seating uh, mm -hmm. like options. So like I'm guessing su like <clears throat> suites um, mm -hmm. and things like that, like boxes um, to get corporate partners at. And so you charge a little more, you get, you know, a little more money. So I think, mm -hmm. I think it worked out for them. Um, and I do think they were trying to show like, Hey, we don't have to play at this high school field. Like minor league baseball is over. We could play there if we wanted to every game. And chances are we could move the fence back five yards in left field so that we could go both directions. Um, that was the issue is the, the back line of the end zone was literally like three feet from the fence. And Which I don't so, understand. I, I thought all like big league baseball was the same size. Mm -mm. No, your ballparks can be different. Ballparks can vary. Yeah, like if you're oh. if you're going to try to do a full football game at like Minute Maid Park, you couldn't have done it from the left field left field to mm -hmm. uh, to home plate because of how short the left field ball is. Like you would have to run it another. You have to run it out through right field instead. They did the same thing with uh, the games at um, what's it now called Choctaw Stadium, which used to be the ballpark in Arlington or Globe Life, whatever it was called then. You know they yeah. had to run the they had to run the games out uh, the, the 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 field out to right field because it was long enough to to do it safely. So I don't yeah not all not all ballparks are the same, and you can't really run it up to center field because no one's going to get a good seat out of it. There's just not right. a good line of sight if you do that. So you have to run it along the foul line. Which is why you shouldn't do these games in baseball stadiums. Let's get back to that. <laughs> like you should not do this in, in baseball stadiums, unless unless it's a you know a stadium that was built in the seventies that can convert to football and baseball sidelines. Like there's just no need to do it. I uh, I would agree unless my school needed to do that to make money, <coughs> and if they needed to play at a minor league ballpark every Saturday to make more money, then I'd say go ahead if you can get the same decent sized crowd, but. I don't anyway. think you get the same decent side. I don't think you get the same crowd, though. That's the thing. I think Jack, the fact that Jacksonville State got you a crowd, I don't think they get that crowd if SFA came there or if mm -hmm. or if uh, Tarleton came there or if Abilene Christian came there. Or, yeah. you, you might get it for UCA. You would get it for Jack. Uh, for you got it for Jacksonville State, but maybe Austin P. But that's it. Like you're you're not going to yeah. get it all the time. It's not yeah. a guaranteed thing. You might take a loss at some of those points too. And the bad thing about this, UNA was hoping that they would have a major turnout. No, that almost that entire stadium was red and white. There wasn't very much purple and gold, purple and white, whatever. It was primarily red and white. Yeah, that game was trash. Pants. Did they uh did they sell it out? Yes, they did. It sold out. I thought so. Um and ESPN had the capacity wrong. It that that minor league stadium seats ten thousand and ESPN had it at seven thousand. Yeah, the attendance says it was ten one. So well I don't care. Good for them. But Chris Hammond's gonna be upset because we're talking about baseball. So um I don't know if you saw his comment last week. He was like, I sat through way too much Kennesaw State baseball talk. And I was like, I think it was like two and a half minutes. But Dude, anyway, you needed something. Right. You you needed something to listen to while you're trying to get Vandal alumni to donate money. I don't want to hear it, Chris. Pipe down. <laughs> oh man! All right, uh, we kind of alluded to the dramatic ending from the uh, Sam Houston Eastern Kentucky game. That was nuts. Uh, I did not watch this game, so I'm interested to see. So or hear what y'all said. What y'all? What y'all? Go watched. ahead. Go ahead, Will. Down 17-16, the Cardiac Cats drove down, kicked a field goal. It was good. They went or That's, I guess, three seconds left. Uh, so game-winning field goal, essentially. They kicked off, um, and Eastern Kentucky tried to, you know, hook and ladder their way up the field on the kickoff return and fumbled. And uh, I think fumbled into the end zone. Yeah. Uh, uh, yeah. And um, they recovered it. Sam Houston did and took it back for or in the end zone for a touchdown. And so it was 25-17, eight-point win. Uh, if you don't, I mean – it's kind of a garbage touchdown. So it was really a 1917 win. Um, and even through the elation of a big win, Sam Houston still demoted their offensive coordinator. Yeah, they put him on the on the chopping block. And Casey Keeler made a tough call midseason. He is already getting into FBS form. He is saying, We're cutthroat here. And look at look at their offense. Their offense has been terrible this year. They're averaging yeah. Averaging something like, not I don't think they're even averaging twenty points a game. I need to do the math. They haven't had 
that same potent offense that they had as last year. And why is that? Because the person who ran that offense is now coaching at the University of Delaware, and you're seeing what he's yep. doing there. The Wait. Thing that, yeah. Go ahead. I was going to say, here's the thing that sucks <clears> for <throat> Sam fans, all, you know, five of them that aren't in prison. Um, this Their game this week against Utah Tech, they don't have half their starters because they all redshirted. That came out today, too. So they're going to be playing their second, a lot of second stringers, letting get those guys get some get some action. So you thought your your offense was bad before. Wait till now, yeah. like, like that's just uh, I mean that's just what I mean at this point. I, I, I mean I think they're only four. I think they're only four and one or three and one or something like that. They're what I mean, but what are you three playing and two? For? Three and two. But what are you playing for at this point if you're if you're a Sam player and what are you watching at this point if you're a Sam fan besides the fact that you're an alum like. What a waste. I mean, you you would think transitioning in to you see USA, you would want to go out. Yeah, you're not playing for playoffs. Yeah, you're not not playing for for uh you know but you'd wanna play. you'd wanna go but out the route like Jacks Jacksonville's going. It's, that was my point because when folks look at you for next year and look at what you did last year. Jacksonville State has gone in rec shop. A couple of their games, they did play like the old Jacksonville State, but you know they're doing this. Sam Houston rivalry just, game, uh, <laughs> shush, rivalry games. Yeah, but 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 Sam Sam Houston's just been like, nah, whatever. Well, we get Air Force next year at NRG. Like, you know, be be better, okay? But at the same, I mean, but yeah, at the same time, I didn't think Utah Tech had a chance against Sam Houston until that came out today, and I, now I think Utah Tech might have a chance against Sam Houston this weekend. Well, because, and you look at the games they have left too. It's a good time to be Abilene Christian because yeah. Abilene Christian's really pushing for a playoff bid, and yep. they uh, they could very well uh, win a game against Sam Houston that I was really counting on them probably dropping. Um, and Southern Utah is the same way; they're um, they're still playing for something. So that's that's big for those two schools to end the year on a a, a wounded, uninterested, and like half power sam houston team yeah so things don't look great in huntsville texas well they never do it's huntsville sure it kind of smells bad feel so unsafe the, so the huh. news about keeler doing what he did that surprises me because he doesn't want to coach at the fbs level no and you know i guess it was you rev that was that shared something about um, Keeler didn't get a contract. He still doesn't have a contract. Everybody else does. Every other coach. Keeler does not. Every other coach at Sam Houston, every other sport has and, a new contract heading into the conference. USA. And I, I've I, heard, I thought I've heard. he has a one year contract then. Nope. No. So everyone, so everyone has gotten a contract for next year. He does not. And the thing with that is the things I've heard is that one, they have to raise some more money to pay him what an FBS coach should be paid. Sure. Because he wasn't, and, and that does make sense. But you know, what if you don't? You know, like I mean, I, I I've never seen Keeler as wanting to be an FBS coach. He said that he didn't want to be in the FBS. I wouldn't. I would be. I would be shocked if he's coaching in next year. To be honest with you, if oh, he didn't just, said the same thing. But look at what what that he quickly changed his. Hey name. hey hey! At, at the rate KSU is going, I'll be shocked if Bohannon's coaching next year also. So well, yeah, true. True. Unfortunately, the, let's let's talk about him for a second. Um, he is a great coach, first of all. Yeah, and I think he's a good dude. But I do think the triple option is something they have to move away from exactly. heading into the Conference exactly. USA. Exactly. And he doesn't know anything else. That's what he trained under. He trained yeah. under <clears throat> uh, what's his? I don't know the Paul guy's Johnson. name. Yeah, at Georgia Tech. And, I mean, that's unfortunate for him. And maybe he can adjust. I'm sure as a football coach, you know other schemes because you have to know other offenses for defense. Um, But that could be really unfortunate for him if they have to part ways solely because he's got a philosophy that's just not going to work. Obviously with the new rule change and then second at the FBS level. And the thing is, I don't like even with Keeler at Sam Houston. I don't know who would replace those two. I don't. I don't have anybody in mind unless you are bold and you go after uh, North Dakota State's head coach. I wouldn't go after. I wouldn't go after. And I'd go after Stig from South Dakota State instead. To be honest with you, if I was going after a coach, to, that, that dude's not leaving South Dakota State. I, he's not going. He's not going to. But I would try to entice him to do so. I mean. No. 
I mean, there's, I, I mean, Shoot, even go after one of the assistants at either of those teams. Yeah, you can go after uh, who's the, who's the OC is it Lou John? I think it's his name up, up, up at SDSU. But like, there's, I mean, there's things. Here's the thing about Mohan. I think Mohan's a nice guy. I think he's a good coach. But at the same time, just because you're a great FCS coach doesn't mean you're a great FBS coach, or you would be a great FBS coach because of the system you run. Look at the look at the schools at FBS who run the triple and look and look at their look at their success. It's not that great. Yeah. And so maybe maybe FCS is where he should be. Maybe he goes to a school. Maybe let's say let's say KSU does let him go because I mean he he's on he's got to be on the hot seat now at the moment, right? So I think you know, he is. So look, he could go to a school like Presbyterian or Campbell or Gardner Webb and turn them around with his philosophy, his ability to recruit and do anything like there's there's opportunities for him that aren't bad opportunities. But I just I don't you know I Kennesaw State is going to have to figure out a whole new a whole new offensive scheme because they're just they're not going to it's not going to cut it. it you know they might they might have fun games against service academies, but, <laughs> but that's about it. Short games, short games, yeah. Getting Army and Navy on the schedule would be some some quick ones. So, I mean, you know, I don't know. I just I don't. And to your point, yeah, I don't know who they would pull to to uh, to replace them. I don't know. Maybe, maybe they go after. Uh, Nate, uh, this guy, what's his name? Oh gosh, uh, Nate, Nathan Brown at UCA, and get him to uh, a. <laughs> that, so. that dude ain't leaving UCA. <laughs> and you know it. He, uh, him and Stig are a lot alike. I feel yeah. like Brown will be obviously difference in age, but Brown's gonna be at UCA till he uh, quits coaching. Yeah. So, uh, just a point of note here: they both make just under four hundred thousand a year, um, Bohannon and Keeler. And so Keeler is going to be a highly sought after coach at the FCS level. If he were to say, Hey, look, I don't want to go. I don't want to lead this program into the FBS. Um, So I think he could make that money somewhere um, else. Like I think he could get a big name job. Um, Bohannon, maybe not because a lot of schools aren't going to want to pull the triple option as their philosophy moving forward. But like you were saying, if he goes to one of the smaller schools, He's not going to make that much. I mean, he, if he goes to Gardner Webb, he's not going to make four hundred thousand dollars a year. No, but just a interesting thing there. I I would never choose that uh, offense to run because I it puts either. you in a bad spot. I but wouldn't either. Then again, he won a lot of games doing it, so I can't really say anything. Yeah. But um, let's see. Any other games you guys want to touch on? Um, I mean, I, I I mean, no, there wasn't any other games that we were surprised about how the, the, the game ended. Who said I was surprised? <laughs> <laughs> I was not surprised. UCA went to Kennesaw and just put a beat down uh, on Kennesaw State, 51 to 24. Um, man, I, I don't think you could have drawn it up any better for UCA. Um, I think we had almost 600 yards offense. Uh, Christian Richmond broke the a sun record for receptions in a game, which I don't know if that reaches back to just a sun football. If that was like <laughs> this year, <laughs> but I don't know. He's in the record book. Now he had 12 catches for like 160 yards. So uh, props to him. Got the offensive player of the week. Um, McIlvain played well through one interception. Um, McIlvain is, is really coming along. Not, I mean, knock on wood, but he, uh, He's up at like 1,700 yards now, like 15 touchdowns, four interceptions. So, I mean, he's really coming along. He's getting comfortable in the playbook, I think. Um, and I think that's kind of what you're seeing with the UCA offense. We've scored 49, 49, and 51 in the last three games. So, um, I don't know. I know, Rev, you were surprised. So It just surprises me that you guys can manage to completely step on your toes like you did against Lindenwood and then turn around. And, and and just obliterate KSU on the road. Like I just I don't get your your Jekyll and Hyde team that you're that that you have going on in Conway. Um, you know, it makes me wonder. Like when you look at the games, I know you got a buy this week, and I'm sure you'll put up 49 on buy. But for like, sure, for sure. But like you know, it makes it really hard to look at games with you because we don't know which which bear team is going to show up. Is it the team that can't play defense? Like like against Lindenwood? Is it the team that? Well, I mean, and here's the other. I mean, you know. KSU, KSU is not who we thought they were because they're having their own offensive woes. They don't know what they're going to run. They don't know what they're going to do. So, you know, but I expected better out of the KSU defense and it wasn't there. Mm-hmm. 
Nope. Uh, but then, like, is it, or is it going to be the team that played well against Missouri State and lost to the special teams? Is it going to be the team, you know, like, you just don't know, you don't, or, or is it going to be the team that's gone out and won, and won some of these really great games you've won this year? Like, you don't know what you're going to get. Like, I thought SFA was inconsistent, but good God, man. UCA yeah. is, is really, every game is either at this end or this end of the spectrum, and there's nothing consistent uh, with, with how they're playing. I will say the one thing that's been consistent is the offense has improved. Um, the offense against Missouri State was terrible. Yeah, no, I agree. Uh, I agree. Your offense has gotten better. I don't think your special team was as or as bad as they were. But they're not. But you, sh- if you watch the game Saturday, you saw that we muffed a punt. I did see. That, I mean, I, that I, we I recovered. Kind of, yeah, and then we muffed a punt that they <laughs> recovered. Uh, and so we did have some special teams uh, hiccups, but those were you know isolated and didn't lead to points. So, and uh, this is. And this is crazy to think. UCA should be five and two right now. I would argue that we could be six and six one. and one. I forgot about Missouri State, but if you look at just scores alone, yes, Semo was an eight point loss. Lindenwood was a, a three point, like loss. a three point loss. Yeah, yeah. There's, there's, Central there's problem- should at least be five and two, and yeah. probably a top of the power rankings. Here's the problem, though: you lost the Lindenwood. Like, that, how do you lose to a transitional team? Like, how seriously? How do you a team as good as you lose to a transitioning team? Yes, um, but I will say it's not like they came in and you looked bad the entire game. You looked bad in one facet of the game. And so did, did did you overlook that team? No, I mean you can't argue that we looked bad in any facet of the game other you than you let a transitioning team score fifty two points on you. Yeah, I mean I get that your offense looked great, but the I mean, but I mean it's at the same time, you 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 got in a you got in a leg race with a transitioning team who you should have blown out. I know I agree. And your, and your, and your defense just, you know, don't know what they did. Playing and, devil playing devil's advocate though, Lindenwood is not your typical transitioning team though. I will say that Lindenwood could, I, if I was betting, I would have put money on them to beat Eastern Illinois. They went to Eastern Illinois this past weekend and won. Um, their offense got shot. That's crazy. Uh, their quarterback's really good. They've got several FBS transfers that that look the part. Um, they were a good team. Now, transitioning team. I understand that, and I'm not gonna argue with it, but. I do think they were a they're a good team, and you could look back at the end of the year and be like, "Oh, well, maybe that wasn't just terrible. They did win some games." Uh, they Eastern Illinois is two and four, right? They, I mean, yeah. they're not exactly they're not world beaters there, honestly. And they beat no. them by three. They beat y'all by three. They got complete. They got owned by Simo, like you would expect. They got owned by UT Martin, which you would expect, and they barely beat Houston Christian which you would expect true. because Houston Christian is awful. So, I mean, yeah, I, I, I mean, I, I see your point, but at the, but at the same time, it, it just, it, it makes it so hard to figure out what you're going to do. And then once we start talking about this power pole thing, that's going to hurt. That's, I mean, that's going to oh, hurt. It already yeah, has. yeah. I mean, and that's going to, no matter what you do this year, unless you beat SFA, like it's, it's going to hurt. I mean, if you don't beat SFA, it's all for naught at that point, but. Oh, for sure. But, but like, I mean, that, I mean, that, that, that's one of those losses that's going to absolutely sting longer than it should. Um, and I will say this about Lindenwood. If we're going to break down losses, those games against SEMO and UT Martin were not blowouts early. They were blowouts in the fourth quarter, um, which it's still a blowout. You still lost by 21 to SEMO and, uh, 30 to UT Martin, but still anyway, that's and enough about we, Linwood. Well, one quick thing. Okay. Even, even, even though they are not playing a full OVC schedule, yes. they have Murray state and Tennessee tech coming up. Lindenwood could win the, win out the rest of their schedule. They could absolutely eight win two. Out. Now that eight and two would have wins against McKendry, uh, William Jewell and Kaiser. Yeah, right. exactly. That's but, I was gonna, yeah, but so, I mean, I mean, either, either way, I mean, those those will be as good as good as shutting out Central Arkansas in the fourth quarter of their fifty-two to forty-nine. Victory. It's true, they did. We shut them out, other than a field goal, but <laughs> that was a weird game. I well, and that, that that's my point is that every UCA game this year has been weird in some facet or another. There like, hasn't it, been a game where you're like, oh yeah, that's probably. I mean, that, 
Missouri State, yes, you can be like, okay, a 13-point loss to Missouri State. At the time, that's probably what we expected. But we also did not play well. Um, and I blame that on – we're a very young – and I kind of blame all the like inconsistency on the fact that we're really young. Again, I go back to what I said preseason. We have 45 new faces on the field uh, – or on the roster, excuse me. Um, we're not very old, even with our returners. Um, so I will say, give them that some of that inconsistency is they haven't learned how to play consistent yet. Yeah. Uh, I, like I, I said, on, I think I said on the national one too, the, the big boy show, like give UCA, maybe it was this, uh, one of the other shows I was on. I said, give UCA two years and they're yeah. top 10 team. Hopefully we can hold on to some of these guys. I would love to hold on to Darius Hale. Uh, I don't think, I don't think that's going to happen. I think he'll be FBS, but I hope y'all do too. Maybe so, but I also think they can pitch the uh, the idea that, hey, if you stay here, you're going to score a lot of touchdowns, you're going to run for a lot of yards, and you might not do that at the FBS level. And you're not – like, you're you're a big guy, like you're beefy, but you're not super tall. Yeah. And, I mean, he's like 5'10". So yeah. we'll I don't see. see him – I don't see him staying in state, though, because he wouldn't get action up in – Fayetteville and nobody mm-hmm. wants to go to Jonesboro. So Jonesboro is a ghost town right now yeah. in football. Yeah. But Jones has lost it. Um, <laughs> I did ooh. see when I was unrelated, when I was in Memphis, I did see the Arkansas State track and field team at the Memphis airport whenever I was flying home. Hey, they're um, good. They are good. They're flying to Houston, I guess, for a meet they had, but they're they're good. So they're very you know, good. Yeah, the best they're the best thing Arkansas State has. All right, let's let's go to the yeah, let's get to the middle. middle. Let's stop crapping on the fact that UCA lost to Linden, Lindenwood. It's okay. It happened. It is what it is. <laughs> it might not be okay, but it, it happened. <laughs> uh, let's get to the middle section. And uh, today, like we said pre-show, we're going to start big, go small. We're just going to talk a little, what do we know now? What are your thoughts on the national landscape? And then we'll get to the Wax Sun um, landscape and where we sit uh, really with playoffs in mind um, uh, after week seven. So first of all, what was your most surprising results around the country this this past week? I, I got I got I got it. I got it. <laughs> all right. All right. I'm going to go. Idaho with beating Montana. <laughs> Yeah, that was nuts. Uh, the little brown Stein is going back to Moscow. Yeah. yeah, Chris Hammond was getting Steins at the club after that game. Is that a uh, is that like a named drink there? So they have a so they so and Chris, you can you can chastise me if I get this wrong, but in in, in Moscow they have a thing called the Corner Club Bar. Sure. And so their beers by default are thirty two ounce tubs as they call them instead of 16 ounce pints, they're 32 ounce tubs. That's a lot. <laughs> and so, so tubs at the club is getting beer at the corner club. And, uh, and the name of a podcast, if you guys want to listen to some good Idaho Vandal content, um, I don't know. I don't think Chris is on it as much anymore, but Brian and all them to do a really good job with it. No, so, I think he kind of, yeah. But uh, yeah. So, um, and then everybody who's a, who's a club member has a shirt that has their number on it. And it says, go home, whatever your number is, you're drunk. And if you go in and your club card number is on a board and they're going to randomly pick it. And so if you randomly show up and yours is there, you drink for free from eight to eight. That's funny. I know. Right. But anyways, yeah, no, Idaho beating Montana. What a job coach Eck has done in Idaho. Like, I mean, he, you know, he, he's just, he is turning that program around. They, you know, they're going to sneak into the playoffs. They have to at this point. Um, oh, you know, Big Sky, like Kyler Neal said on the Big Boy Show, Big Sky is now getting five teams in. They're getting five. You know, that that to me was the – it was a very enjoyable surprise. But I'd also said, too, um, even on the Big Boy Show, whenever I was touting – because I've been touting for the past four weeks or so that South Dakota State was the best team in the nation. They proved that on Saturday. So thank you, you know, rest of voters for catching up with me on voting South Dakota State one in your polls because I've been doing it now for the past, I think, four weeks. It was so because was, they saw last week's vid, uh, episode. <laughs> but whenever, yeah, yeah, good job. <laughs> good job, Skip. Uh, Skip Owens there. Um, anyways, the, the point of that is, you know, I actually lost my train of thought. Uh, so, no, whenever I was on, the, whenever I was on the, the, the podcast talking about South Dakota State, I said that I thought Idaho State – 
would have a chance to be a good team. But I also said that I didn't think Montana was as good as their ranking because if you looked at who they played, they hadn't played anybody. They had played a very weak schedule so far. They played Northwestern State. They played South Dakota. I mean, and when you look at their their results against other, other uh, uh, if you look at their results, I hate using com- like comparative results like that. But if you look at what like what what North Dakota State did, or if you look at what South Dakota State did against USC, like it didn't stand out as 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 much as you as you thought it would. And so I don't. I mean, it was a surprise, but I don't. I'm not surprised it happened. Because I knew Montana was going to stumble at some point. I just figured it would have been to the, to the to the Sac States or the uh, the 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 Weber Grill States or the uh, Montana States, not Idaho. So props. I wish. I mean, if it wasn't cold, I would have wore my uh, my my uh, Vandal shirt today. But yeah, but it's hockey jersey day today. So <laughs> yeah, I was definitely surprised by that. They uh, let's see, they moved up to seventeen. In the stats poll, or sixteen, was it seventeen or sixteen? 17. I've seen some polls. Put, I've seen some people who are putting out polls and putting them in like the top ten. And I think top ten. I think that's a little bit early. Yep. Well, you know, early, in yes. our in our broadcast media poll, they're they're tenth. I um, think it's still a little bit early. Is, I have them at. Where I've had them. I've had them at like seventeen. I think I had them twenty five last. They're week. they're at fifteen in my poll. Yeah, I don't know. If, I mean, that's a big win. I just. I don't think they're top 10 yet. In the coaches poll, they are 24th. And that is behind um, Austin P and SFA. Yeah. Um, so I I do think they're probably better than both of those teams. No, I agree. So, I 100% agree, but I don't know if they're better than I don't, I don't, I don't think they're a top. I still don't think they're a top 10. So I think, not I think yet. Not yet. Not yet. So are we... I think their schedule is favorable for them to eventually jump into the top ten. They've got a couple. Of, let me pull it up because I had it. I got I it. They got at... Portland State, Sac State, uh, Eastern Washington, Davis, and Idaho State. Yeah, so it's favorable, but they've also got to play Sac State. Well, and Eastern Washington Which... is better than one and five. Sac State is looking real good right now. Let's talk about Sac State because I think we agree consensus number one: South Dakota State. Um, is Sac State the second best team in the country? Do they deserve the? It's two either spot? them or Weber. Uh yeah, it's, uh, you, yeah. I don't know if it's them or Weber. To be honest with you, I think I would probably give it to Weber, honestly, and I think Weber would show it head to head. But that's, I think, I could, I could see arguments for both sides. They're both <laughs> really, they're both really put together, like extremely well put together teams. Um. And uh, it, it, I, I, I mean, I can see that one going either way. It's definitely not the Montana, uh, Montana State or NDSU. It's one of those two. To me, well, Sac State looks like this year they're not that you know four or five seed like they have been in the past, where they get like Austin P goes to Sacramento and beats them. Yeah, um, they they look like a team that you could see in the semifinals um, or potentially in Frisco. <laughs> so. That's crazy to think. Just a couple of years ago, they were the bottom of the big sky. Yep. Yeah. Exactly. They've got Montana this week. That'll be huge. Uh, well, in... so what is what is Sac State's upcoming schedule? So Mon- Montana, Idaho, Weber. So three tough games in a row, and yeah, then and... Portland State and Davis. And yeah, and they've Weber... got to travel. They've got to travel to Ogden for the Weber game too. Yeah, yep. and Weber has. Montana State, Montana, Sac State, and then bottom feeders. So here's the thing. They're going to beat each other up. Mm-hmm. I don't – I think you'll have – because right now you could argue that Montana State, Weber State, um, I, I would not put Montana as a seed. And then Sac State would all get seeds. I don't necessarily see them all getting seeds just naturally because one of them is going to lose more than the others. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, but making the playoffs and still making a deep run and, and winning that first round game by, you know, 30, 40 points. So the big sky is good. It's it's deep. Yeah. This is probably the best. I mean, they're not the big fluffy this time. They've Mm-mm. they've they have really upped their game in the valley. 
Valley's was, awful. Yeah. It's awful. You take a, I mean, if you look at the, I mean, it's North Dakota State, South Dakota State, Missouri State, and then a big gap. Good. Yeah, and Missouri State's not as good as you thought they were. You and Southern I, Illinois did, looks better. The Sokolukis look better. It's literally the Dakotas, big gap, Southern Illinois, big gap, rest of Valley. Exactly. So I don't think, I think Missouri Valley might only get three this year. Which to be North Dakota is looking decent. Um, yeah. Which I, would I think maybe they're, they're the, still the North Dakota that we know. I would well, include no. them in the tier with South Dakota or South uh, Illinois. Southern, Southern Illinois, 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 yeah. Here's the thing, though. So now, um, if I'm not mistaken, it's South Dakota State and North Dakota this week. Uh, yes, think, in the, I, in the oh, and, it, and it's and it's and it's at the USPS Sorting Center in a yep. in Grand Forks. So um, I'm predicting an upset. <laughs> I mean, I you know, South. The thing about South Dakota State, as much as I do love the Jackrabbits, and I really do. I I, I, I like them. I like what they're I like their culture. I like all their stuff. I like that they finally sell beer at their stadium, but like the thing about what they do is they have a loss that they shouldn't have. They, they always stumble over their own, their own, their own feet. And that's what took them from seeding conversation last year down to being road dogs for most of the playoffs. And I'm worried that this one could be that game. Mm-hmm. Because North Dakota plays really well on the Alara center. And they're not a bad team. They're they're and just they're not. they're not bad. They're not good. They're just decent. They're good enough to beat you if they if, if they're exactly if you're, if you're not focused on them because they're going to be focused on you. Mm-hmm. That's why I'm picking an upset in that game. I mean, yeah, that's that's I could I could see that one being an upset. So that that's probably my upset of the week. All right, ja- hey Jax fans, if you're listening or Jax players, don't don't do this because I've been touting you for the past <laughs> month. Don't mess this up for me. Hey, I'll put myself on their hype video. South Coast State, you're going to lose this week. You're not very good. <laughs> <laughs> What's funny is they could take that clip and put it in there, and I'm about to follow it up by saying I don't believe that. I think you're an undisputed number one team in the country. But I know, I know. Like it's like whenever McCreary was talking, I was just in there shaking my head. Like, <laughs> oh man! But that was so, the highlight of our podcasting career. Uh, yeah. Like I can, I'm putting that on my resume now. Featured in South Dakota State, <laughs> South Dakota State football's favorite podcast, The Wax End. Oh man! Um, well, go ahead. Another game that I found surprising, and it has no playoff implications. It's just the simple fact that a former power got blown out by a transitioning team, and that was Texas A&M Commerce over McNeese. Like, oh, yeah, I, that I, I'm sorry. Just, just quickly saying, like, McNeese, you're absolutely terrible this year. But I tell you what, Commerce and Lindenwood both, I think, are teams that could do well. Um, oh yeah, for sure. Now, Commerce has, I th- well, here's the thing too: they both have conference alignments right now that will be favorable in the next few years to be good and like mm-hmm. to to win. I mean, make the playoffs once they're. Hopefully, the transition rule goes away. And you can make the playoffs as soon as you have the full number of scholarships. But anyway, um, they both don't play in the greatest of conferences or the toughest of conferences. And so you could see them um, do well early. Yeah. So if we look at a and Commerce's schedule this year, and I'm only going to look at the D1 games. Um, they lost by one to Tennessee Tech. They lost by 10 to Sam Houston. Um, they beat Southeastern Louisiana 31-28. They beat McNeese. They've got Houston Christian this week, and that could potentially be a win. And then here's the real game that I think can mess up people's worlds. World, uh, worlds is they get Incarnate Word in Commerce. Oh, yep. that's a 29th. trap game. That's a trap game. Yeah. You know, and that that's going to screw. Like if, if Incarnate Word stumbles again, like they did against uh, Southeastern Louisiana, like I think there's a lot of hearts that are going to break. <laughs> <laughs> I might have to watch yep. that game. It's on the 29th of October. Uh, two weeks. I won't. I won't be able to watch it. <laughs> two weeks. It is two weeks. That uh, that'll be good because I think other than I mean, I think they beat Houston Christian. I think they beat Northwestern State. I think they beat Nichols, Tennessee yeah. State. I think that'll be a game. But mm-hmm. Incarnate Word on paper should you know blow them out. But Southeastern Louisiana should have blown them out too on paper. No, hundred percent. So and and they and they get them at home they get them in commerce on where the giant lion used to hang out but they got rid of that turf yeah 
Can we talk about the SoCon? No. No, nobody <laughs> likes the SoCon. Well, it's SoCon. If you want, you want to talk SoCon, go talk to Kevin. Uh, yeah, I, if, I, there's I, a whole I would rather go games. jump in front of a bus. But, you know, the one thing about the SoCon <laughs> is nobody's talking about Chattanooga. And I think they should no. be. Mm-hmm. No, I mean, they're up I'll to, even throw Sanford in there. Yeah. The stats Nobody is talking about two. those two teams. It's kind of nuts. Everybody's talking about Mercer, though. Everybody's talking about Mercer, yeah, but everybody's ignoring Chattanooga. Chattanooga quietly is having one hell of a season. Um, you know, and they're positioning themselves to be in a really great spot, maybe even a seed in the playoffs with the way that they're going. They're, I mean, but no one's saying a word about them. They uh, I don't know if we'll it's so con this week. Yeah, I don't know. My thing with Chattanooga is that it, it, historically we always would see Chattanooga do this, and then they would do the same thing South Dakota State does. They would somehow they would just stumble in the back half of the year. It's like they lost the, the Chattanooga choo choo momentum and just it just started slowing down. Like, I I, I hope they don't because this is really enjoyable to watch watch them do well, well. Here's the thing: if you look at all three of their schedules, Mercer has to travel to Chattanooga and to Homewood, Alabama, to play Samford and Chattanooga. I personally think they won't win both of those. They'll no. win. They'll win one of them, <laughs> and then Samford has Mercer at home and travels to Chattanooga. They will win one of those. Chattanooga gets both of them at home, and I'm gonna I'm gonna bet Samford probably beats Chattanooga at home, and you will end up with a three way tie for um, the SoCon. But I bet they have a better way to to settle that than the Wax Sun has for their AQ. You want to talk about that? <laughs> You're like, look, that's, that's, a- called a, that's called a segue. That is a perfect segue. <laughs> I, I mean, I hate to cut the SoCon talk off, but that was perfect. That's what I do. The top three in the SoCon are going to settle it out in the next, like, three weeks. So, One chatty. Well, yeah. Um, but perfect segue into um, the Wax Sun power ranking and AQ situation. So I'm going to throw it up on the screen. If you don't know, um, the... Wack and the A-Sun have a partnership, one automatic qualifying bid for the playoffs, and each each conference in their own way determines a champion, nominates that champion for the automatic qualifier, and then um, countable games are tallied up, and whoever has the better record in those countable games gets the AQ. If you have the same record, we go to... Um, head to head and if they haven't played each other then we go to this power ranking which i will throw up on the screen now so you missed one very important thing on oh this god too. what was it all right so we said you said you're talking about this so the second part of this this uh this rule yeah you know, so it says that the regular season champion is a reclassifying team the conference shall nominate the team finishing highest in the regular season standings that is eligible for fcs auto qualifier makes sense tiebreaker formulas are to be set by each conference and may include use of the A Sun WAC power ranking. So basically, the conferences can decide their tiebreaker however they damn well please. But so I there's not going to be a set. If there is a tiebreaker, there's not going to be a set one that both are going to use to crown their <laughs> champion that they're going to put up for the AQ. I would assume both conferences are going to say, okay, if we have a tie, the head to head gets it because everybody in the WAC plays each other. Everybody in the A Sun plays each right. other. Right. Yeah. Which I, would if think, it can- I would think so too, but the, you're the. Not coming out the ASM, but the ASM has done some really nutty stuff whenever it's come to determining stuff. This no, you're right. Measure. But if they didn't go to head to head, I think they would get so much pushback that mm-hmm. it wouldn't be worth doing a power thing. So we'll see. But hopefully they do head to head. I hope so. But they're setting this up for just a giant cluster. But anyway. Here is the power ranking as of this week. I chose to use the wax um, graphic. I thought it was a little bit better, a little cleaner. Um, SFA sits at the top. Abilene Christian sits there in second. And look at the gap in the actual power like rating, whatever the n- numerical value is, 0. 0.89 to 0. 0.72. There's a big gap between SFA and Abilene Christian. Uh, Austin P. I don't know why they listed Tarleton because they're not eligible, but they didn't list the transitioning schools. Um, Eastern Kentucky at five, UCA at six, Southern Utah at seven, Kennesaw at eight, and then North Alabama at 10. 
Um, we kind of talked about countable games. I uh, I did some digging. Not really. I just looked at schedules. But um, and got each team's record in countable games in teams that are like eligible for this automatic qualifier. So um, SFA is undefeated, but has only played three countable games. Kind of a wacky uh, like quirk in the schedule there. And I think that's why their power ranking is so high too, because I think they're, I mean, if you look at, like I said earlier, if you look at their games, their losses are two FBS teams or FBS transitioning teams, and that's not hurting them with their power ranking. No, it's not. Uh, but it's no secret that SFA schedule has, like, the countable games schedule has not been that difficult. No. Now, I mean, Ab- Abilene's uh-huh. good. Yeah. Tarleton's okay. But Alcorn State? I mean, they're, they're not, not bad. They're not great, but they're not bad. And then they have, we had the two Utah <laughs> schools. Right. And then, you know, which you, I'm talking about the three that have been played. Yeah. The three that have played are not, they're not great um, at all by any means. So I, again, that's what makes this, this whole power rating system completely like ludicrous, in my opinion. Abilene, four and one. Austin P, get this. They've got six countable games so far. They're five and one. Their strength of schedule is crap. They've played Presbyterian, Alabama AM. Um, oh, God. Who else? Uh, they're only. Kentucky. Oh, you're ta- you're talking about cannibal games. Yeah, well, Eastern not... Kentucky counts. Um, yeah, they played EKU. Their only loss was to us. Mm-hmm. Um, so their their non conference strength of schedule in countable non conference games was crap. But anyway, Eastern Kentucky three and one. Their only loss is to Austin P. UCA three and three. So Southern Utah, Kennesaw's two and two, and then North Alabama is zero and five. Um. So here's the quirk here. So let's just take a team like Southern Utah or UCA, for example. They could win out if they win four games and are seven and three. SFA is likely not going to, and I'm assuming this like power rank, like the record in countable games would be um, by winning percentage because each team has vastly different numbers of games. I think it's got to be, yeah. So SFA is at a really an advantage because they've got fewer games. So, like, if you win two more, you're pretty much guaranteed to be the best record in um, countable games. If but, it, the pro- but the problem is, is that this isn't used to actually determine who the conferences are picking for their champions. It's supplementary to it. So SFA would have to win out the rest of the WAC because Abilene Christian's also undefeated in the WAC. They play each other again. The first game wasn't a counter. So if they both run their schedule, at least the WAC portion of their schedule, not – not dismissing the UCA game, but we're, but we're just looking at conference things. Yes. That makes the game on November the 19th all that more important because that will probably determine who wins the whack. Mm-hmm. Yes. And then let's say from the ace on, let's say UCA runs the rest of their schedule. Right. So then it gets to those tiebreakers. And then if they go to the power pole, then yeah, then SFA definitely has an advantage at that point. Which I don't think the power pole is going to end up being used because nobody's going to have the same record. I don't think so either. I think it's just something. The something power pole is there. As a, it's a catch net saying, hey, if this does happen, at least we've got a power ranking. And so they put this power ranking out. But then the WAC was pretty transparent and was like, look, if the season ended today, Abilene would be the WAC champion. UCA would be the ASUN champion. Abilene would go because they're four and one. UCA is three and three. So the winning percentage, is just, it's 800 for Abilene and 500 for UCA. So I really think it's just going to come down to record, but I think that it sucks that if it comes down to record, because the strength of schedule is totally different because these teams Mm -hmm. didn't play each other. Yeah. At least when you've got everybody playing each other, the strength of schedule starts to average out. (coughs) Um, So I think it sucks. I think it, I, I, yeah, I don't like this. And because there's going to be a team that's deserving, that's going to get left out. You know, Glad I don't have to deal with that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If I you, will say it does make me happy that if you lose to Jacksonville State, it's a non-counter. Yeah. If you if you beat Jacksonville State, it's a counter. So like yeah. if we were to beat them on Senior Day, it counts. Yep. If we no. lose to them, it doesn't. It's just so. like the it's just like the 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 uh, playoff requirements. Same thing. You lose an FBS team, you don't get punished. The the catch though is that in the ASUN standings, it counts. So yeah. It, because your, game, conf- your conference is a big nutter butter. Like <laughs> I'm telling you, they, so, e- it, even though we're not eligible for the A Sun Championship title, 
uh, the last game of the season for both UCA and JSU will basically be the A Sun Championship game. You can you can crush their hopes and dreams. And what nah, it see, here's the deal though. I but mean, I mean, at that point, you might as well give it to UCA. Exactly. But, I mean, you, UCA has to win out though. That's another thing. But exactly. Which who knows who shows up? Like you said, which team? <laughs> yeah, makes the field. Um, but yeah, I think this is. The more I've dug into it, man, it is, it is hard to look at, and my brain hurts. <laughs> yeah, because well, it's like, 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 like Rev said, there's two different ways of determining champions of each conference, and then you have a different way of determining the AQ. But if that doesn't work, you go to this, and I understand that. But like, why even put the power ranking out there then? Why not just be like, okay, this power ranking that we probably won't have to use. You know, I don't know. No, I don't Whatever. Know. It's just, it's like I said. This is just making things more convoluted because you have, you have certain writers who I'm not going to name tweet out that SFA is the AQ based upon the thing by tweeting out the power pole, which is not the case. You know, you have the wax yeah. thing. It's like I just like you had different. You're you're really just muddying the waters. You know, how about my thought would be this? How about you just say here's the power pole, and but as it, but you know, I don't even know share. Just track it. Just track the power pole. Focus right. on the standings. Yep. And then maybe as you get to like November, start saying here's yep. where start you start broadcasting out here's where the power pole stands. Like and you, it's not, you didn't it's even not have to impacting. put it out there. No. Have it out there where people can find it, but you don't have to broadcast it, broadcast the standings. Right. Like this yep. is you're just you're just making a giant CF of 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 the of this. And we know it's gonna be, which makes me hope that next year the conferences get their get their crap together and they say, Okay, we're gonna do a eight an eight, you know, eight team uh, 18 Football conference schedule. Yeah. yeah. And just and get their, get their stuff together. It's definitely, um, a cluster, but yeah, I'm trying very hard back, not to curse. <laughs> props to the whack though, for putting out a, if the season ended today, the automatic qualifier would be a, um, the, Abilene like the Christian. champion from each conference would be these two schools and Abilene Christian would get it. So props to the whack for kind of clearing that up. Cause if you have an example like that, you can almost like backtrack and be like, okay, so this is how it works. Yep, so. exactly. Props to them. Let's talk yeah. week eight football because we are down to five weeks left in the regular season. Uh, most teams only have four games left. This is uh, just kind of nuts that we're, mm-hmm. you know, getting to the end of October. <laughs> But uh, we have a good schedule this week. And you know what? I just forgot. I did not play the banner during when we were talking results. I typed a whole banner out of results. Oh. And never played it. That sucks. Oh, no. That makes me feel bad. I do that all anyway. the time for Cocky Nation. You know, just put it up real quick. Just feel better about yourself. Just put to make myself feel better? Yeah, I just put it up real quick. Look at this hard work. Because I saw it earlier yeah. and thought it looked great. And then we're not going to say what Will accidentally did or didn't do. But we there may be a five-second recording of Brandon's face. <laughs> that'll be i'll put that at the end and i'll put what i said after that uh oh man anyway let's talk week eight we have a great slate of games really um first off our game of the week which we'll talk about last southeast louisiana at jacksonville state north alabama goes to richmond to play eastern kentucky tennessee tech comes to kennesaw uh, SFA goes to Cedar City to play Southern Utah. Southwest Baptist uh, playing Tarleton would be a good one. <laughs> a uh, runner right there. Yeah, and then Sam Houston making the trip to Utah Tech in what is now a more interesting game. So uh, we don't have to, you know, get in depth. I think it's, I think it's better when we just kind of do the game day style and just like you know, give your thoughts, give a prediction, and we'll move on. So uh, we'll start with. Let's just start with Sam Houston and Utah Tech because I think that's interesting. Yeah, so like I said, had the news not come out this week that one Sam Houston was getting new offense was benching their uh, demoting their offensive coordinator, but then two losing half of their starters to red shirts. I would have said that Sam Houston would probably would have won this by you know a good fourteen points or so. But now you know what I called it last week it didn't happen. I'm going for it this week. Give me Utah Tech. Give me the Blazers. Get that dub at home. You know, tear down the goalposts, do whatever you do, drink some decaf, <laughs> just get nuts, do whatever you need to do down there. But that's who I'm taking, Utah Tech. Brandon? Um, yeah, I agree with Rev. I think the fact that um, 
half of their starters are gone to redshirt. That's going to play a major role into Utah Tech's advantage. Uh, and the fact that it's also in St. George, Utah. See, no, my geography right there. Uh, but well, considering it, they almost changed it to St. George State <laughs> University, uh, you know, good job. No, um, but yeah, I'm taking the Trailblazers. I, uh, I will also take Utah Tech. And um, you're talking about tearing the goalpost down. There's not water anywhere near the campus the virgin river <laughs> runs through town but you have to i mean you'd have to like get on the interstate drive a little bit get off the interstate and walk past um some gas stations and you'd be at the virgin river so they're not going to throw them in the river but um yeah i think utah tech wins this one and that's a bold prediction did we just go three and oh for utah tech that's crazy yeah. who would have thought Southwest Baptist at Tarleton. Not much to talk about. I think Tarleton yeah. will just be better, and uh, I think they I think Bo Allen has a uh, standout game, and they they win. Uh, the possible future FBS team will get the job done. Probably. Yeah, so. yeah. I was gonna make a joke about Tarleton <laughs> probably having a having a full stadium for this game, and then they're gonna brag about it on Twitter, but. Yep. Yeah, this game will be over early. Way to, way to, you know, I mean, so you got, so yeah, Tarleton, big. Uh, SFA at Southern Utah. And what I think is a lot of people are going to pick SFA or just assume SFA is going to win. Uh, but Southern Utah, don't look past them. Yeah, so if this game was in Nacogdoches, I'd pick SFA, you know, like no, without thinking about it. But it, yep. but it's in Cedar City. That's a long haul to travel. Last time SFA played in Cedar City, they lost. I think it was an overtime. It was like 42-35 back in 2019. You know, that's that's a tough one. I think SFA is starting to get some momentum going over the past couple of weeks. Um, I think they can play consistent ball, play like what they did in the second half. Uh, I think they're de- they can win. I think their defense matches up real well against Southern Utah. Um, that's why I'm going to take them, but I don't think it's going to be a score like we saw against Tarleton. I think it's going to be a closer game, maybe a, a 10 point game, but I'm going to take the Jacks. I have done horrible picking against SFA <laughs> the past couple of weeks. There is no, keep, keep doing question. it. Keep doing it. Keep picking. Against no, them. there is no question on who I'm going to pick. I'm picking SFA in this one. I, uh, Watch them I lose think... now. I don't think Brandon. <laughs> Kiss of death. <laughs> My uh, my evaluation of the situation is that these both of these teams are kind of um, building programs, um, really not necessarily from the ground up because I think SFA has always had a program, but you know there were dark days for SFA football there for a little bit. Obviously, there's been some dark days for Southern Utah, so uh, I think SFA is just a little um, further ahead in that rebuilding schedule than Southern Utah is. This is kind of Southern Utah's first year of. Uh, looking like they're, you know, doing a good job of rebuilding, making strides. So, yeah, I'm going to go with SFA uh, even on the road. Tennessee Tech, Kennesaw State. Um, Kennesaw State, obviously, a beat down last week. This is going to be the fourth home game in a row for the Owls, which, if you ask me, that sucks. Um, four home games, usually that fourth one, if usually there's nobody left in your stadium. <laughs> Um, at least at this level, and there was nobody in their stadium to start. So, um, yeah, I know it. It hurts. Uh, Kennesaw State. I think they're banged up. Uh, Tennessee Tech's not good though. Uh, so I'm gonna say Kennesaw State is able to run the ball a little bit better than they did against UCA. They got outrushed against UCA. Only the fourth time in program history that they were outrushed. Um, so, but I'm gonna say Kennesaw State gets it done. Yeah, so I actually know Coach Alexander's sister from Tennessee Tech, and that's not a joke. And just because of that, and because I don't know what Coach Bohannon has, Tennessee Tech's not a good team, but neither is Kennesaw State at the moment. Kennesaw State doesn't have an offense. They don't have. They don't. They don't. They don't have like. Uh, uh, they're not themselves. So I'm gonna pick the Golden Eagles, Tennessee Tech. Let's get the upset. Yeah, Tennessee Tech, uh, 
coming from somebody who used to be in the OVC, like their team used to be in the OVC, Tennessee Tech is always that one team late in the season that can have a surprise upset. Um, even though this won't be an upset, um, I think uh, they get the job done and make Kennesaw State look even worse. Man, that would be rock bottom for Kennesaw State if that does hey, happen. That just shows you that the CSA made a real, real dumbass choice with the schools that picking them in. But I, I still digress. think it's a coaching thing, an offensive scheme thing. I think it is too, but I mean, I I, I wonder how fickle the KSU fan base is going to be on this one. Like, you know, you, they're so used to doing well with being a playoff team, and then they're they're close to hitting what's rock bottom for their program. Yeah. Uh, North Alabama making the trip to Richmond to play Eastern Kentucky. Um, man, North Alabama, they're they're hurting. They're, Bless they, their souls. I feel bad for them. I do too. The last two years, man, we have we've talked them up and said maybe this is the year they they finally kind of break through, especially this year because they had something to play for. It was like, hey, these games actually matter now. Yeah. Um, and. They have not done well so far. They've been close in a few games, but their their defense is not not good. Um, so, I think Eastern Kentucky with the offense they've got, um, especially coming off a heartbreaker to Sam Houston, um, they get things back into gear and beat the uh, Lions. Yeah, give me the fight and waltz. I think they're going to win. That's a I don't. I don't see North Alabama competing with them. I mean, North Alabama did manage to put a scare in Jacksonville State, but I don't think Eastern Kentucky is going to let a team come into their house and beat them two weeks in a row. Like I just don't see it happening. So, give me the Colonels. I want to pick you and I so bad. Do it. I want to. I want to. Do it. I want to pick it. so bad. Do it. You know what? I think I might. I'm going to go Lions. I'm gonna, I need a sound I'm machine. Pick UNA. <laughs> <laughs> I need like a like a sound machine, like you know the remix, but like hit like <laughs> you know that siren or something when Brandon makes a, a hot take. Sorry, when Skip <laughs> has a hot take. Um, I, I just I I want UNA to have that breakout game that changes the momentum of the program. They've had so many opportunities and nothing. Man, I hate it for Coach Willis. There's a lot of people that don't want him um, in Florence anymore, and I think he is a great coach. Um, they're overreacting. I agree. Um, I think they're maybe acting with some. Uh, they're so feelings. used to the dominant days of the D of D two. Sorry, you're you're in you're playing big boy football now. Yeah. But, hey, uh, did you, hey, Will, is this what you wanted for? For uh, for Brandon. <laughs> yes, that's exactly what I wanted. I need to figure out a way to play that because we have at least one every week where I could do that. I just pulled that off of a certain streaming site. I can send you the link just to have it ready for you to go. <laughs> Please do. That was awesome. Uh, speaking, you called Eastern Kentucky the fighting waltz. Uh, did you see him get after the officials after the game? Yeah, he was pissed. That, he, I mean, they were going in their like locker room, and he yeah. caught them, and yeah. they had to kind of push him away from the white cap. So, yeah. that was, yeah. I was like, I don't know if his cardiologist is, you know, How seeing you... seeing that, like being happy about it. No, like you don't want to, you don't want to see that happen again. So, you know, keep it. I, I get that you're absolutely upset about that game, Coach. I think a lot of us were too, but you know, yeah, don't don't risk the ticker. That uh that pass interference call was a little sus, but yeah. Um, the game of the week. Oh, uh, can you hit the sound again? Uh, uh, I sure can. It, it, you are, if you're already past it. Game of the week. Uh, before we get to it, we got some standings to throw up here. The Rev has taken the lead. He's sick. Last time we showed you standings, he was at second. He is now in the lead by two games, and I am. In second now, uh, tied for second, but still better than third at four and five. And I still have two freebies waiting on me at the end of the year. And so uh, I'm moving up. 
I'm getting better. Brandon's getting worse. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> uh, really, I'm just like three and one since, or like three and two, I guess, since in the last like four weeks because we had two that one week. But um, game of the week, Southeastern Louisiana, Jacksonville State. Um, they're in Jacksonville. Was this this game was played last year, right? Or two years ago? Mm. Three years? Nineteen. Like Nineteen. Okay, ago. I knew it was played at, at Hammond. Because um, that was the year we were like a title contender, and just absolutely, yeah, mm-hmm. we just did that to that game. <laughs> and it was so, the year of that bad hype hype video. <laughs> oh God, I forgot about the hype video. <laughs> uh, this is this is gonna be a fun one. Um, if man, if Southeastern had not lost to Commerce. I would pick them. Game. I'd pick them in an upset, and it could still be a good game. I'm just not confident to pick them in an like in an upset. Well, um, it's also homecoming. So, will there be twenty thousand people there? Like, yes. you know, there'll be a big crowd. Yes. Well, we always have a big crowd on homecoming. I'm gonna. I'm just gonna throw my pick out there, and I'm gonna roll with uh, Jacksonville State to uh, get the win on homecoming. I wouldn't have scheduled Southeastern on homecoming. But I guess if I had extra scholarships, I'd be more confident. This is to complete the home and home. Yeah, I know. Um, I would have so put yeah. Nichols, to be honest. But yeah, yeah, I'm gonna roll with Jacksonville State to uh, to get it done on homecoming. Brandon, you can go because I think Rob's oh. like doing some research. Gotcha. Um, yeah, it, I don't need to explain myself. It's homecoming, big crowd. Band will be loud. Crowd will be loud. I mean, JSU is going to win this. It'll be a good game. It'll be a close game. Um, but I still think at the end, it'll end up being at least a 10-point win for JSU. Yeah, no, I was sending you the air horn. Yeah, actually. I see that now. <laughs> um, no, I, I mean, you can act like I was doing research. There's not much to look at. Like, okay. I'm going to pick JSU just because in the event that somehow Southeast Louisiana does – Pull this W out. I haven't lost anything in the standings. See, smart. Keep my keep. Got to keep my lead. But no, I just southeast south southeastern Louisiana. They if they if they they you know they they beat UIW, which was a great win last second. You know, sort of. I don't say a fluke win, but like you know, what I mean, like it was the last second the safety slips got you know, like well, the the play was a fluke. The, the play was a fluke. Right now, them the, hanging it, with them was not. The, yeah, no, that's not what I'm saying. I'm saying it, ending it that way was a fluke. Yes, then the fact that they had a freshman quarterback come in because uh, what's his name, Cephas Johnson, I got, mm-hmm. uh, got injured. Like the fact that he kept them in is great, but then you lost to AM Commerce, and AM Commerce isn't a good team. But Jacksonville State is a much better team than a and Commerce, even in the John Gross era. So I think you have to take the Gamecocks on homecoming. So, yeah, I think we're I think it's a it's a clean sweep. Which a question has that means that the standings will be the same next week. But yeah. it's OK. I can start just picking against you at any time. <laughs> A question has been going through my mind. Where would JSU be ranked if we were actually being ranked? Oh, see, okay, hold on. So I like Massey ratings. Yeah. And uh, just an interesting uh, factoid here. They've been as high as six. Yeah. Um, But right now, you would be, in their ratings, 18th. um, In their computer ratings. So I wonder why your strength of schedule is 63rd in the country. Uh, compare yeah, that as, to, as we go through the season, it's gotten worse. Well, compare that to like UCA's is 19. And so, yeah. um, yeah, I mean, I think that's part of it, but, and to start, we had a top 15 strength of schedule, like mm-hmm. to start the season. Here, and here's the thing, though, because you're asking to be ranked. Are you being ranked contending that you were still jumping to FBS or if you're staying as an FCS team? As an FCS team. You wouldn't have Rich Rod as your coach, so God knows where you would be because I don't think Rich Rod would have gone to an FCS program. So, And you probably like, wouldn't have won some of these I mean, games because it's no secret you've got some transfers on your team that wouldn't right. be there. 
Yeah. Yeah. So, I'm I'm mainly like for this year we would be an FCS team, but transitioning. So I'm I'm specifically talking about this year with Rich Rod. If that makes so sense. So like you, like all the players you have on the roster. Correct. So you're saying like take your like mostly FBS roster and put them in the FCS and let us say what we think they would be ranked. No, 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 no. After the results of this season, where would we be ranked? You answer my question. Yeah, but the problem the problem with your question is that you're you're whenever I ask you for clarification, because if we were ranking you, that means you wouldn't be jumping to FBS. You'd still be an FCS yeah. team who wasn't transitioning. And if that and was it, the case, you wouldn't have what you have on your team this year. That's the that's the difference. So I mean, in theory, if we want to play it in theory, I could see y'all being ranked probably ninth, eleventh. I was about to say, I think in our media <laughs> poll, we would be top ten. The problem is, you wouldn't have the players you have, and you wouldn't have the coach you have. Yeah, you would. Yeah, I mean, I, I'll, I'll I'll acquiesce to what you're what you're trying to say, and I'd say I, I think you'd probably be ninth. I I don't I think your strength of schedule would hurt you. Mm-hmm. I think the the way that you finished some of your games here recently would probably hurt you a little bit too in the eyes of you know, the voters. And plus, I think you would have a little <clears throat> a little recency bias go against you. So somebody get this man another beer. That's <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, so a ninth, ninth. Yeah, I'd I'd buy that. I'd buy anywhere from nine to 14 um but i I could take that but the problem is it's hard for me to do that just because you're not like the players wouldn't be there and the coach wouldn't be there right completely different situation you wouldn't you wouldn't have rich rod you would had you know you could have had someone like like eck you know a good offensive coordinator from somewhere in the sds go over there it wouldn't have been we we would be unstoppable but you also have to like the question itself is like saying where would Louisiana Tech be in the FCS this year? It, that, that's like the nature of the question you're asking, mm-hmm. right? Yeah. Is saying like, okay, what, where they wouldn't have the same players, but where would they rank in FCS if they had that team? Okay, I see what you're saying now. Yeah, yeah. So, so no, uh, well, hey, I think that about does it for week eight of Wax Sun Weekly. Um, I say it every week, but if you do not already, Rev, point to it. Um, make sure you subscribe below to the CS Fans Nation YouTube channel. Um, you can also catch us on Spotify. Burn throws our episodes on there every week um, and Apple Podcasts. And I think pretty much wherever podcasts are found. So um, make sure you uh, listen on there if you can't watch. So because I know we're ugly and you may not want to watch us. But uh, uh, make sure you subscribe and then make sure you join the Facebook page, uh, FCS Fans Nation. Uh, almost almost 13,000 now uh, strong. So uh, community is growing and always some good um, communication going on mm-hmm. there and some trash talk, if you may. So, yep. Man, I have a great picture to show you guys to close the episode, but then I remembered that we don't play until next week. Um, I was like, I, I have next game in mind and we don't play. We have a bye week. Save, so. save it for, save it for next week. Cause it'll be good. Yep. And also I want to add one thing too. So it, I, by the time this comes out, it's going to be either midnight or basically Wednesday. We're folks are listening to this. Yeah. Go on YouTube Wednesday night at eight o'clock. Watch the South Dakota state, uh, Jackrabbit illustrated B team live show. Cause it's probably going to be pretty lit with, uh, the performance <laughs> With, against NDSU, they're live. I don't know if anybody saw this, but their live podcast was not crazy at Buffalo Wild Wings in Fargo. It was pretty amusing. But go watch this one. I think they're going to have a field day with their podcast. It'll definitely be entertaining. Are we still doing a mass podcast with them at some point? I yeah, it's still we're, we a playoff podcast. That's everybody that's not part of the Big Boy Show. I think would be pretty. Amazing. <laughs> oh, so we're gonna have our own selection Sunday like preview. I think I, that or we talked through the results, but yeah, I think that'd be a lot of fun to do. We just got to, you know, I don't know if we pull everybody off their show. Maybe we grab Matt and Brendan or maybe, maybe we just grab Brendan and Ben, you know, I, I don't know. I think it'd be fun. I mean, I mean, they all are quality Matt and Dallas and Kyle, they all know their stuff. Uh, so does Brendan and Ben and Chad and, and Chad. I mean, man, poor Chad. He's, he is, he's becoming the, 
the 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 pod father at the moment of all the podcasts he's on. So I, I think it'd be fun to do it. Honestly, I think it'd be I think it'd be it would be um, it'd be chaos too. And I, I absolutely a lot of chaos. chaos, a lot of chaos. But I think it'd be a lot of fun to do. So we gotta we gotta hash that out. Also, we've had a couple of weeks. We were supposed to have a special guest. I think we're gonna have him on next week. He's a very busy man. You know, oh, very. Very, very busy man. He ha- he, he has uh, uh, children's. He has he has children's. He has a, uh, you know he you know he 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 protects our country and does drill and all that stuff. So, but I think we're gonna have him on next week. I'll He's have to already sit up straight in my chair. Make sure the room's clean in the back. Uh, <laughs> make sure the microphone's we- sounding good. I was going to say we should screw with him and come in with like ties and, and collars. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, that would be funny. But uh, no, that's going to be, it's going to be fun next week. Uh, we'll have a, we'll have a good time. If you don't know who we're talking about, you'll, we'll you'll see. see. Yeah. So guys, thanks for joining me. Uh, it was fun. It's always fun. And uh, I can't wait till next week. Make sure you're watching all the content that's coming off this YouTube channel. It's really good. Not just us. So I, I don't even know if we're that good or not. I think it's we set the bar pretty low. So, But we are South Dakota State football's favorite podcast. It's true. So, uh, yes. Thanks for, uh, thanks for watching this. Make sure you leave a like, comment, and subscribe. And we will see you all next week.